Finding the right settings can be tough. With so much talk about linear versus exponential or high sends and low sends, what's actually better anymore? What about double or single edit binds? The answer isn't totally clear cut as you'd think, and we're here to help you decide. How's it going friends? I'm your handy Fortnite helper Dan, and I'll be giving you guys a rundown of the most crucial sensitivity and keybind settings. I'll be talking about typically used configurations, why they're useful, and what kind of playstyles a certain setting might fit. No matter what you play on, we've included something helpful in this video, so sit back and put on your thinking cap, because we got a whole lot to get through. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides, and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have got to check out ProGuides.com, and be sure to drop a like in this video to show our support. We really appreciate it. Let me just get this out of the way. Your sensitivity and keybinds, no matter what you play on, are ultimately down to your preference. Everyone's different. The devices they play on are different, and different strengths or playstyles may suit one config over another. Like if you're a really fast flick-oriented player, you can get more use out of higher sensitivity that allows for insanely fast adjustments. But if you have a slower and more methodical style of building, or you value your aim, you might prefer keeping your sends on the low end just so you have more precision and control. So while there are certain guidelines or pro player examples you can follow, in the end, it's up to you as an individual to find what works. That means a lot of testing and trying to get a feel for every change you make. So load into Creative or the Combine so you can immediately test every change with building, editing, and shooting those target dummies. All right, let's first discuss sensitivity, probably the most talked about setting out there. So for controller players, with legacy settings, linear, and exponential, there are just so many choices right now. What exactly does each setting offer? So if you didn't know, using legacy settings allows for the old style of aim assist. You know, L2 or trigger spamming that allowed you to constantly snap onto your enemy. Some pros and content creators like Nick Merckx and Jarvis actually prefer using legacy settings. Not only for the old aim assist, but also because they're just comfortable with it. On the other hand, non-legacy settings use the new aim assist. The new aim assist has no constant snapping when you aim down sights, but does a lot better job of tracking moving targets. But there aren't only aim assist differences you need to consider. Using the new controller settings also allow you to choose linear input. A lot of pro controller players you might have heard of, like Innocence, Wolfies, and Letchy, have swapped to linear recently. Linear basically makes your thumbstick movements a lot more consistent and responsive when it comes to fast building, shotgun flicks, and edits. Whereas on exponential input, smaller thumbstick movements allow for more precise crosshair adjustments. Compared to linear, this leads to some inconsistencies when trying to act fast and can make flicking or quick movements imprecise. The majority of pros that have swapped to linear are loving it. They're saying their crosshair movements feel more like as if they're on keyboard and mouse now. And a large part of that is because of just how consistent it is. If you haven't given it a try yet, don't be afraid to swap. The new settings with linear input enabled have so much potential. If you do swap, you'll definitely need to consider the rest of your settings. Mess around and find what works well for you. The new settings page is a little overwhelming, so here are a few guidelines that you can follow. On linear, try keeping your look sensitivities between 35% and 65%. Keep your building and editing sensitivity multipliers between 1.2 and 2.5. Going higher, the lower your normal sensitivity is. For your horizontal and vertical turning boosts, pick a value between 0 and 5%, since you won't really need it as much now that you're on linear. All boost ramp times seem to work best at 0 seconds. And just so you can still be precise with your rifles, set your ADS to something low, like within 8% to 15%. The ADS turning boost should be set to 0%, and your look dampening time at 0 as well. Finally, make sure instant boost when building is turned on so you have faster building immediately when needed. Don't feel the need to stay within these ranges, because plenty of players go outside of them. They're just guidelines, everyone. Phase Sway, for instance, plays on a much higher sensitivity, around 80%, partially because he hasn't made the swap to linear, but also because his playstyle involves crazy movements that fit better with a higher sense. And just on the topic of dead zones, try to use whatever's lowest and doesn't make your joysticks drift. The whole point of dead zones is to help eliminate the ghost movement worn out controllers have. It completely depends on your gamepad and how much use it's seen, so everyone's going to have different dead zones. But most of the time, if your controller is in pretty good condition, it's going to be between 0.05 and 0.15. To find your dead zone, start low and test to see if your crosshair or character moves on their own. If they do, slowly increase the correct thumbstick dead zone until the drifting's gone. Alright, moving on. Lucky for us keyboard and mouse players, not much has changed in terms of sensitivity settings and what's normal to use. So just as a refresher, most pro players use an effective DPI between 42 and 67, with only a few outliers here and there. 
To find your effective DPI, multiply your in-game sensitivity with your mouse's DPI. So for example, if you're running 0.06 in-game with 800 DPI, we can bust out a calculator and see that equals 48. Being on the lower end of typical sensitivities, it has the advantages of more precision, better tracking, and overall the most potential for high accuracy. But like we said earlier, if you'd rather go for a sensitivity more oriented toward fast building, you could bump that up to 0.08 or even higher. Then your effective DPI would be in the upper range. In the end, it's totally up to you what you think works best. You should definitely try multiple values out and make small adjustments based on whether you're overshooting or undershooting. Like maybe you're missing pieces in your edits, or you're punching in too many. In which case, you've got to adjust appropriately. As for your ADS and scope sensitivities, those are very important too. Most pros put their ADS at around 0.5 or 0.6, which works fine for most sensitivities. But if you're running on the higher end of effective DPIs, you might want to consider something lower like 0.3 or 0.4 to help make your AR aim a bit smoother. And for scope sensitivities, some pros leave theirs on 1.0 to make close range sniping a bit easier. Others put it lower so it better fits with their ADS sends. This one is totally up to you and whether you prefer quick scoping at close range or precise adjustments at long distances. A lot of you guys have been asking about mobile sensitivity and how to improve aim there. So we're going to give you a short rundown of one crucial setting we think has the best potential for improving your mobile aim. Look acceleration found in your game settings under input makes it so that how fast your crosshair moves is tied to how quickly you swipe across the screen. This allows you to do things like 180 degree turns easily while still allowing you to make small adjustments when you need to. By default, this thing is maxed out, but if you move the slider all the way down, you can remove all this acceleration. So with it off, for instance, sliding three inches across your screen is always gonna result in the same crosshair movement, whether you're flicking those three inches or slowly dragging it. Ever since this setting came out, a lot of high level mobile players have tried it out and now swear by it. Just like with the mouse and keyboard, having acceleration off can make your aim a lot more consistent. Things like really fast shotgun flicks or quick edits are less likely to be messed up because you don't have to factor in the speed of your swipes. If you haven't messed with this setting already and you feel like your flick or edit games are weak, we suggest you try lowering it all the way down. If you do that, your overall look sense is going to start feeling much higher. But no big deal, you can adjust that down until your normal movements feel right again. When it comes down to it, there's no right answer for what sensitivity you should use on mobile because you might be playing on a small phone with a certain style of grip or on a large iPad that has plenty more room to work with. So you just need to mess around and creative with some free building, flick, and edit practice to find what works. Practice fast edits and flicks with the new setting and see if it's making a difference. If your aim is too jittery with it set to the lowest, increase the acceleration setting by increments of 0.1 until you find something that works for you. Now onto binding choice. There isn't a complete setup or agreed upon layout for every keybind. A lot of it does come down to preference and things like which keyboard or controller you play on. However, there are definitely some rules you need to follow if you want the best binds possible. For all your PC players out there, the biggest problem with most players' binds is that they're inconvenient to hit. What we mean by inconvenient is any bind that hinders you from hitting another key. One example would be having your wall on F and your ramp on T. You're likely going to be hitting both of those keys with your index finger, and by having two important keys use the same finger, you're going to have delays in between each build. The bigger problem comes up when you consider your movement keys. Movement's crucial, and nobody wants to slip up when it matters most. So ideally, you want your middle, ring, and index fingers resting on W, A, S, D at all times. So what should you use for building binds, you ask? The most common setup we're seeing a lot of pros swapping uses this combination, both side mouse buttons, left shift and V. With this setup, you're only using your left pinky and thumb for the keyboard keys and your right thumb for the mouse buttons, leaving the rest of the fingers to press any movement or edit keys you need. Speaking of edit keys, with the new confirm on release option, there's now even more choice in what to run. So do you turn that off and run double edit keybinds? Well, some people are saying things like, there's a delay with the new option, but from all the testing and footage we've seen, it's pretty much non-existent or negligible. And the pros that have gotten used to the new setting have all said how much faster it feels for them. On a controller, the first step is to bind switch mode and edit to different buttons. Having them on the same button is a big no-no. It's that way by default, and if you keep it, you're much more likely to botch your edits. Most players we see typically put edit on Y slash triangle or one of their paddles and keep B slash circle exclusively for switching modes. You can even swap those two around depending on which you'd rather press. That's for both combat and build controls. Now, if you need a new spot for toggling your pickaxe, L3 is the most convenient. Just ignore the warning you get for sprint not being bound to anything. You should have sprint by default enabled in your game settings, so you won't need that button at all. Then there's the topic of single edit binds or double edit binds. What you choose here can depend on if your controller has paddles or not. Also, your grip plays a huge role. The difference between both isn't too significant, so this one comes down to your liking. 
For the double bind setup, you start your edit with one button, then confirm it with another. So for instance, you can start the edit with Y slash triangle and confirm it with left bumper or one of your paddles. The double bind setup is slightly faster and has more potential, but is much harder to master. So it's not necessarily better for everyone out there. But if you currently use a single button setup, you can stay with that with no serious disadvantage. Just ensure you enable confirm edit on release. That setting will definitely increase the speed of your edits and make things much simpler once you get used to it. For controller build binds, the default Builder Pro setup tends to work best. There's no point in really swapping them since all those buttons are convenient and easy to press. So stair on left trigger, roof on left bumper, wall on right trigger, and floor on right bumper is what's typically run. For keyboard and mouse players, we recommend turning on confirm on release and using a single keybind. This is the simplest setup that'll work more than okay for 99% of players. Just make sure you're comfortable pressing the key you choose. Something like F, E, or R, all of which can be pressed by your index finger, tends to work best. You might need to rebind something if you take over one of those keys, but it's worth it since your edit key is used all the time. So it's pretty important to have it on a good key. Just make sure it's comfortable to constantly press and isn't too out of the way. Before we conclude, there's just one more setting that we've been asked about constantly since Chapter 2 started, colorblind mode. Everyone was using this setting before the new season, mainly for more visibility looking into the storm. But Chapter 2 changed how the storm looks, and it's a lot easier to see through than it used to be. So unless you're actually colorblind or you just prefer the color change, you can turn it off and you won't be at a disadvantage. Nobody likes that feeling of unfamiliarity whenever you swap settings. Pressing the wrong keys because you swapped binds recently really sucks, but it's still worth doing. Sure, you need to practice, sometimes for hours or days until you get the hang of your new settings, but if it wasn't worth it, no pro would ever change settings. Yet most of them do, and quite often, because they're not afraid of adjusting, especially when it's to make themselves better in the long run. Get an immediate feel for every change, and once you're happy, don't stop practicing. It'll take a while for your muscle memory to relearn pressing the right keys and the correct amount of distance to flick for a shot. But if you can stick through the tough learning phase, you'll only emerge on the other end as a better player. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases. It really helps us out and we do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show PROGUIDES some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Once again, it's your host Dan. You can find me at, at Daniel Lammerman everywhere, and we'll see you on the next one.